الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters welcome back once again in our last video we have spoken about inheritance of prophets from the books of Sunnis and I had proven from many different books many different narrations narrated by many different companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophets alayhi salatu wasallam they do not leave any type of inheritance inshallah in this video we're going to be discussing uh, prophetic inheritance from the books of Shia and what do the books of Shia say now because of you see I just want to keep the videos very very brief I'm just going to give two evidences two pieces of evidence two different narrations from the books of Shia and from a book which is classed as very very authentic and inshallah we're going to suffice upon that the first narration that I want to discuss is from the book Al-Kafi. I have the Arabic version here. And for the benefit of the English readers, I've got the uh, English also, the translation. So I'll just read out of that, inshallah. Uh, I've marked the Arabic at the top and the English is at the bottom, inshallah. I'll translate for you. What do the books of Shia say about prophetic inheritance? There's a narration, there's a narration here. Muhammad ibn Yahya an Ahmad ibn Muhammad bin Isa an Muhammad ibn Khalid an Abi Abi al-Bakhtari an Abi Abdullah qala inna al-ulama waratsatul anbiya wa dhaka anna al-anbiya lam yuwarithu dirhaman wala dinara wa inma awrathu ahadith min ahadithihim this is a very very clear narration talking about the inheritance of the prophets alayhi salatu wa salam look what as a so-called infallible imam of the shias has to say he says scholars the learned are the heirs of the prophets since the prophets do not leave behind them any monetary legacy so look here he very very clearly states that prophets alayhi salatu wasalam they do not leave any monetary legacy behind but rather they leave behind them the legacy of their narrations and their traditions the ahadith and then in brackets, the person who's translated, he admits himself, he says in brackets, since it is not proper for them to leave monetary legacy behind them for their followers as being their guide. So he also admits in, uh, in the commentary of this narration that it is not proper for uh, Prophet wasalam, to leave monetary legacy. That was one narration. I'll show you a second narration, inshallah, and then we'll move on. There's another narration again. This is a part of a very long narration. I'll just read out the English. He says that uh, verily the scholars are the heirs of the prophets. The prophets do not leave behind them any monetary legacy. And in brackets, he says it is not proper for the prophets to leave monetary legacy behind them for their followers as being their guide. They leave behind knowledge. They leave ilm for their uh, followers, for their family and those people who love them, those people who want to follow them. So this is a book, Usul Al-Kafi, which is a very, very authentic and accepted uh, and has been authenticated by many, many scholars. I have actually a video. Uh, um, if you scroll down, there's a video on my channel, Al-Islam Productions. Uh, you will see that many uh, uh, the opinions of many different scholars regarding this book, Usul Al-Kafi, and how high in esteem they actually hold this book and the authenticity. So this book has very, very clearly stated to us uh, from infallible, Im so-called infallible Imams that the Prophet uh, they do not leave inheritance, rather they leave behind them knowledge. Now, let's say just for argument's sake, even if we were to believe that Prophet wasalam, do leave inheritance, even then, according to Shia standards, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha should not really be receiving and she should not qualify uh, to receive any, any share of this land that was left by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And inshallah, I will give you reasons uh, for that. This is the third part of Usul al-Kafi. It's, it's known as Furu al-Kafi. In Furu al-Kafi, Muhammad ibn Yaqub al-Kulayni, he has set a great chapter in which he has 11 narrations and the chapter has been titled Bab Anna Nisa La Yarisna Min al Shay'a. If you just look at that, that is a chapter with 11 narrations and in there he goes to prove that women females they are not entitled 
to any immovables that have been left behind by their male deceased so if a father passes away or if a husband passes away and he leaves behind immovables immovables such as estate land uh, um, uh, properties buildings houses etc anything which cannot be moved then the female members who are entitled to his inheritance they do not qualify to receive anything of these immovables and rather what will happen is their share from amongst these immovables it will be valued and they will be given uh, a price equivalent to their share either in gold or either in money or either in silver or some sort of or some other type of wealth but the, the actual thing they will not be given so this is a chapter and he brings 11 narrations and i'll just read out a few narrations to you the first narration is from abu jafar abu jafar is one of the infallible imams of the shia he says that females they will not inherit any any land or any property from amongst their males that have passed away uh, there's another one here that i would like to share with yourselves i mean this just shows the sternness and uh, the severity of this issue amongst the shia imams um, abu abdillah he says that uh, Yazid as Yazid as he is a narrator and he says, Sa'altu Abu Abdillah. I asked Abu Abdillah, Anin Nisa hal yarisna al ard, that can women inherit immovables, land, etc. So he says, Fakala la, walakin yarisna qimat al bina. They will actually receive the value of their share. Kala kultu, fa inna nasa la yardona bihaza. So Yazid as he says, I said to the Imam, that people are not really happy with this because they don't see this really to be equal that women men and women they should be equal if men are allowed to take from the immovables then why are the women are not allowed to take so he says for inna nas la that men are, uh, that people are not really happy they're not pleased with this so listen to the imam's reply he says that that when we were given power even then they were not happy and we beat them with whips فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَقِيبُوا ضَرَبَنَاهُمْ بِسَيْفِ And now if they do not straighten themselves and if they don't get their act together, then ضَرَبَنَاهُمْ بِسَيْفِ Then we will strike them with the swords. So we can see how, uh, you know, with how much sternness the Imams would actually implement this judgment and this ruling that women, females are not allowed to receive anything. Anybody who wants to read anything further, this is Furu'ul uh, furu Kafi and it is the chapter Bab Anna Nisa La Yarisma Min Al Ardi Min Al Iqari Shay'a. There's 11 narrations in there. And quickly, I just like to mention the last narration in there. And he gives the reason, the, uh, the Imam actually gives the reason as to why uh, they would uh, implement such a ruling. And he says, وَإِنَّمَا صَارَ هَذَا كَذَا كَيْ لَا تَتَزَوَّجَ الْمَرْأَةُ فَيَجِيءُ زَوْجُهَا أَوْ وَلَدُهَا مِنْ قَوْمٍ آخَرِينَ فَيُزَاحِمَ قَوْمًا فِي عِقَارِهِمْ the reason for such a ruling that women are not allowed to receive any immovables or the share of the immovables the reason for this is so that when a female member of the family she is married outside the family and if she has a share in some land or some uh, some property or some estate that the family has then it could so possibly be that her husband comes and interferes in the family's uh, land in their uh, property etc so to prevent this from happening prevent her uh, her husband who is from a different family altogether coming and interfering in their property or in their inheritance the shia imams they uh, cut it from the roots and they said well when a uh, a girl goes away a woman goes away and she is married then she will only be given the uh, the value of what was there rather the land or the property will stay with the male members so like i said number one prophets i've shown you i've given you evidence that prophets alayhi salatu wasalam even according to shia standards they do not leave inheritance and even if they were to leave inheritance even then Fatima radiallahu anha still does not qualify to receive anything from amongst this land of Fadak because she is a female and females according to the Shia uh, jurisprudence they do not receive uh, a share of immovables and finally I just want to mention that if prophets don't leave inheritance and if the females are not entitled to any immovables then the question is that what is supposed to happen to immovables 
according to Shia standards. What do the books regarding uh, what do the books of Shia say regarding this issue? Inshallah, this is something we're going to be talking about in the next video. Please, inshallah, stay with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah.